uh, slip into the excess, excessive desire. So this excessive desire, even we fulfill it, uh, to have this excessive desire and also to fulfill this excessive desire, both uh, sorry, right. so it's a kind of yeah he said the addictive you know state. So how to recover from this addictive uh, state is I think practice. Mm -hmm. So somehow the zazen is like a an anecdote. anecdote? Antidote. What comes after? Antidote. Oh, how about for active medicine? Yeah, medicine, medicine. Yeah, yeah. So. That's why we we have a reaction against it. You know, lots of complaints uh, for against that. You know, psychological complaint and physical complaint, and, and so on. So it, it's from the beginning. Uh, uh, we have to be ready for those complaints. And uh, because we try to, you know, if you uh, 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 alcoholic, alcoholic, you know, stop drinking, you feel pain or, you know, not hallucination, <laughs> I never experienced, but something like that. Those reactions happen. Kind of cleansing process. It's very painful. Um, but when you accept those painful reactions, I think it's a kind of purification process. So one by one, somehow, you, you are detoxed. <laughs> Detoxication is happening. So the psychological or, or physical pain uh, in your jazen is something like that. So you accept those. You know, I'm, uh, I'm recovering from the uh, addiction to, <laughs> to whatever, you know, to myself, maybe addiction to myself. Right? So, what else? Any other comment? I have a comment. Yeah. So, I think happiness is something a bit tricky because mm. I can understand um, don't cling to happiness. Mm. It's like, um, you know, that's not a good way to achieve happiness or be happiness. But sometimes it just seems like a Zen sentence, you know? Mm. Don't try to achieve happiness and mm. you'll be happy. But mm. I don't understand what's the true way or healthy way of wanting to be happy. Mm. What's the difference between a natural desire for happiness and mm. a clinging for happiness? Mm. Mm. I think most of us have an idea of happiness by it, uh, it is something we can gain. Well, we can achieve the happiness by gaining something. Yeah. But we start to seek um, the project of seeking for happiness with this assumption we are bound to fail. Rather, there's another approach, maybe, uh, to appreciate what we already have. If we miss that, that part of the project, I think then we become ex uh, 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 enter into the astray. So I think this recommends us, you know, change our assumption for happiness. Mm -hmm. Aren't we already happy? Mm -hmm. And uh, why I don't feel happy? Maybe because I lack the ability to appreciate the present happiness. And then uh, due to that uh, insensitivity to my current happy quality, we are driven to seek for happiness somewhere else and sometime else, I think. Mm. So this is, uh, I think, the uh, first mistake. And then the first mistake, uh, second, third, fourth, and mistakes follow the first mistake. Mm. So let's change the first mistake. And then we can discover ha happiness already. Yeah. But uh, maybe our attention tends to draw to what's wrong, maybe. But even you know the very stressful or uh, difficult situation, there must be some element, you know, the uh, what is not wrong. So if we can 
find you know what is not wrong at that situation and then appreciate it. I think uh, we don't have to feel so bad. So, and then with more healthier healthier approach uh, approach and attitude, we can deal with what is wrong. But somehow, you know, oh, something happened, they panicked, and then out of panic, we try to fix it, and then that's create another, you know, uh, mistake and, and so on. So a vicious cycle starts. So I think somehow more like a adult approach to the situ each situation. And then adult knows, mature the person knows the something, there's something which cannot be controlled by myself, my, my wish kind of things. So there is something we have to accept, there is something we can do some, something with it. Maybe we maybe have a reversed approach. We try to do something with what cannot be controlled. <laughs> we try, we, uh, try not to do with what can be controlled. That's why our life does not go as we wish, I think. So we should be intelligent enough. What can be done, what cannot be done. And what can be done, we should accept. And then we should focus what can be done. Kind of things. That's more, more, more clever mm. approach. I think happiness, matter of happiness, I think Buddhism is uh, encouraging, uh, encouraging us to be m more matured, uh, to have more matured and then intelligent uh, approach. To, to this matter. It's not because you're wrong, but you're just not smart enough to deal with life. Because we don't have manual for life, how to live our life. So we have to uh, discover you know, the mechanism of this machine. It's a huge machine. And where is the button to turn off, turn on, how to adjust those things? We have to find those things. Unfortunately, we don't have money. Mm. We bought the very uh, fancy computer, but <laughs> there's no money. <laughs> I don't know if it's a part of your question, but mm. I can't. I can't read things like this anymore. I, <laughs> I find that it, you know, it's just all form. It's just all words. It doesn't yeah. actually teach you how to do things like mm. happiness, and there yeah. is no manual for happiness. Mm. Mm. I think in uh, Western society, it's like more positive attitude. Po positive attitude. Positive. Like, uh, think positive, be positive. <laughs> and Buddhism is like... Uh, Negative? <laughs> yes. So yeah, people think it's like everything is sorrow. Birth is a sorrow, death is a sorrow, mm -hmm. and then this is a sorrow. But I think... Is that Indian mentality? No, it's not Indian mentality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. The thing is like, uh, both of the things are misunderstood. Being positive is... You're not seeing the truth as it is. You are trying to think in what you want to see. Mm. For example, something happened wrong, you think positive, it will mm. go away. Because you want it to go away. And uh, <coughs> Buddhism also, like uh, many things have been said, like it's, uh, everything is sorrow, everything is negative. Mm. But actually, one point maybe missed out is, Buddhism doesn't tell you to think that everything is sorrow, everything is negative. What mm. it tries to tell you is, See the truth as it is. Mm. Means, for example, you lost some money. So neither it is wrong, neither it is good. Mm. There is no need to think positive like it will come back. Mm. Neither there is no need to think like everything is going to go away. Like mm. Mm. Thing is, it has gone and it, that is the truth of that time. Mm. Mm. That is just the truth. Mm. Then you have to find like what is the reason for it. So just like a scientist, when mm. he do the experiment, yeah. Yeah. he doesn't uh, do the experiment with the intention that the result should be like this only. Mm. He just do experiment and see, oh, this is the result. Mm. Mm. Then he yeah, come out with the finding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I say, much more mature. Mm -hmm. you know, not em emotionally you know, involved yeah. or... Uh, you, we tend to take it uh, personally. Personally. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because someone, you know, cursed me. Then we try to react because we take it personally. This universe is against me or something. Mm -hmm. We tend to think that way. In order to maybe accept what happened, right? Yeah. I think the 